This week on Mools and Metal at the Movies, we discuss the 1997 film Soul in the Hole, directed by Daniel Gardner and starring real people from real life. Soul in the Hole is a documentary depicting the lives and struggles of a team of street basketball players aspiring to win the prestigious tournament which the movie is named after, while at the same time balancing their personal issues and problems. This week on Mools and Mel at the Movies, let's put some soul in the hole. Welcome to Mools and Mel at the Movies, the third to last Mools and Mel at the Movies, if you're counting our final Patreon-exclusive episode, Tales from the Hood, which will be out this Saturday. Did you say featuring real people from real life? That's right. (laughs) Oh, man. You're not wrong. I just found it amusing, but... uh... Well, Mel, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to get this out of the way. Okay. Oh, uh, I guess first we should explain how we rate these things. Oh yeah, right. That's, I always forget we got to do that because this is like a show within a show, and you know, usually I finish that this part already at the beginning of the big show, and then mm-hmm. here we are in this mini show. Yeah, the rating system. Uh, so for those of you who are unacquainted, the rating system is simple. Each song, uh, oh, not songs. That's the that's the you see that's the rap rankings. This is Mills and Mill at the movies, a subsidiary of rap rankings. Each movie is related on a re- related. Oh, I just I can't focus at all no more. This is this is one of them days, one of them ones. All right, here we go. Each movie is rated on a scale of one to ten. These numbers do not reflect the quality of a film, as that is indeterminable. Instead, each number reflects a level of enjoyment. In short, here's what each number means. 10 means this is a perfect movie to me. One of my favorite movies of all time. 9 means I love it. 8 means I like it a lot. 7 means I like it. 6 means it's alright. I don't dislike it, but I can't say that I like it. 5 means I feel practically nothing about this. 4 means it's not the worst thing I've ever heard, but I dislike it. 3 means I dislike it. 2 means I hate it. And one means I absolutely can't stand it. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. Side note, if we add a plus or minus to those numbers, they're merely indicators that mean one of two things. One, it's like saying a light or strong version of that number. You hear a five plus, think a strong five. You hear a light seven or a seven minus, that's like a light seven. Um, The other thing it could mean is, uh, you know, it's like the rating can go up or down in the future. You see that seven minus? think you know one day we can come back and be like you know what the movie was actually a six plus or we get that five plus and be like you know what it's actually a six minus you know the point is the ratings aren't static on this show they can go up or down um so yeah they those pluses and minuses no mathematical no statistical value whatsoever uh yeah that's the rating system so with all that said uh i guess we should give our ratings (laughs) you know yeah uh you want to go first sure um Really much to my surprise, eight minus. You know what? I'm going, I'd struggle with this rating. I struggle with it. Well, I'll get into that when we talk about it. Um, I'm going to go with the flat eight. Nice. Yeah. So we both like this thing a lot. You slightly less with the eight minus, but it's still eight, you know, and I sent you a message last night. Yes, you did. And then Do you I mind if I like, read it on the show? Sure. Uh, I yeah. sent it to you. I was like halfway through the movie. And I had to pause. Yeah. So Mool's in the middle of his viewing last night. He sends me this message. Um, he says this. Uh, here it is. Watching Soul in the Hole had to take a break because I am overcome with so much emotion. It has more to do with reminding me of the specific era in New York than specific scenes in the film itself, but I did not expect this low-res and proper aspect ratio YouTube upload of a mostly forgotten film to have this sort of effect on me. And by God, I gotta agree with all that. Now, I didn't take a break, but 
my my heart was was hoping for a break, if that makes any sense. Because I mean, this thing, I don't I recall say, there ever really being a lull in this document. This, it just kind of escalates is, and escalates and escalates for sure. But this also is uh, the warmest film that we've. Oh yeah, for so sure, far. for sure. There is such humanity in this documentary. Um, and I, you know, I, I, let's, I, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. Oh, what the, uh, the biggest, the, words? the biggest basketball documentary of the 1990s is a film called Hoop. Dreams. Oh, that elephant. Yeah. Hoop dreams. Obviously when, when I find out we're going to do this movie, I, the, the large shadow of hoop dreams starts looming. You know, now that's a critically acclaimed documentary, like the basketball documentary. Yes. And it's it from the same era. And, and it is. And it is the the basketball documentary. You know, but. I don't think that just because it is the basketball documentary that this doesn't have its place in the canon as well. It definitely has a place, and it's earned the place. I believe Hoop Dreams was set in uh, Chicago, right? Yeah. Yep. And this Soul in the Hole is and, set and, and in Hoop like Dreams is also York. it's in New York, and it takes place at the public parks in Brooklyn, in Manhattan. These are real places that I know that I've walked past. I've seen mm-hmm. people playing basketball at. You know, and I've been now living in Los Angeles for uh, six years. And, you know, I've only visited home, a.k.a. New York, a few times since then. And it going back to a place that you've left... And then that place has changed incrementally every time you come back. I, I can go back and see my friends and my family and I can hopefully, uh, you know, and this changes too, but I can hopefully eat at the same spots I used to like to eat at, frequent the same places I like to go to. But over time, a lot of those things will change and go away too. And this film is such a snapshot into the mid to late 90s in new york like this film has so much culture and community and dare i say soul yes (laughs) you know and even like i'm i want to say that like if you're not a fan of the sport of basketball or sports in general i still think this is something you should see because it's a historical document of a time and a place that's not exactly like it it, it is now, basically. Right. Um, it's, you know, the snapshot. And it's also not just about basketball. It's a coming-of-age story. It's, it's a slice-of-life of story. story. It's social I mean, commentary. I'm it's as a slice of life. Right. I'm as enthralled by the verbal arguments and the basketball and all like the quote unquote juicy stuff in the film (laughs) as I am by Kenny working his like the liquor store and like how he bags the liquor in these paper bags, how he deals with the customers, little things like this to me in this film are just as, if not more fascinating than what you're supposed to be going to see this film for in the first place. It, they, I mean, this is a good documentary is going to do this, I'd say, but. Oh, oh, and by the way, you can watch it right now. Go on YouTube, type in Soul in the Hole 97. Like I was saying, it's a low res, you know, weird ass, but you get used to it. You get used to it. You get used to it. Uh, Don't watch it full screen. Watch it in the size of the YouTube window. At the very most, do the little theater mode thing. You exactly, because you don't want to stretch it out. It's already a little pixelated, but it's it's watchable. It's certainly watchable. Yeah. And um, my what, only what regret happens? here, I have one regret about this review. I watched okay. it last night, and when the film was over, 
I wanted to look into Kenny Kings and like all the players and see what they were doing. And uh, believe it or not, like the team still around, the tournament still around. Many of the players still alive and well. Many yeah, of whom have now been interviewed. Yeah, for, you know, on as like recently Queen's as and like, stuff like that, like a couple months ago. I believe. Yeah. Like they're around, they're alive and kicking, as they say. And that's a good thing. I mean, if you're listening to this review, I assume you've seen the film. It's it was good to know that they're still around. I mean, you can't <laughs> I don't know if there's been a documentary where I've been so just like feverish to find out if they're do- but afraid too. Like I was afraid of what I might find, but I had to right. know and afraid where and they I were. I think that's now. interesting because afraid because i think unlike let me just tell you hoop dreams does a better job of kind of like a na- being a narrative the sober driven. in reality of chasing yes. uh, something that not everybody more, gets i feel like it's a lot more narrative driven the stakes are the stakes the stakes feel a little bit higher yeah this film though i think is in in the fact that it's a little more slice of lifey and is a little more unpolished I think you get more of the reality, honestly. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is the thing about hoop dreams. You, this I film think... at points, you feel like you're hanging on, like you're hanging on the cage, watching through the cage. Yeah. It's, it does. What I, yeah, what I was going to say earlier, you know, a good documentary does this, but I think it's the subjects you just meet them at the beginning of the movie and very quickly, it feels like I've been a part of these people's lives. They start to feel like family. I'm invested right. in the trajectory of you, all you of know these what? people. From the moment that like Kenny gives that speech to about like, they don't really let most people use the language that I use and whatnot, <laughs> but they know I'm a draw basically. Like they know I'm yeah, entertaining. He was like, but I, it's me though. So, you know, yeah, they're going like, to let me say it. <laughs> you know, know and like, there's just there's like there's a whole essentially like there's there's a world inside of this world like there's a hierarchy there's like there's all this other stuff going on within the structure of the tournament and the officials and the players and the people involved i mean you know when they no show that one that for that one game and and he's crying oh, into the oh god the the drama i felt yeah and that it was totally unexpected it felt like a like a you know hollywood movie twist i'm like wait what and i remember this is real life i'm like yo they really didn't show up like you know and you can't write something like that that's what happened and i'm just like oh my god and yet you see kenny he's just like heartbroken and like you remind yourself it's like I mean, wait, this is over a basketball tournament? But then you think like, yo, this is do or die for a lot of these people involved. Yes. And there's so much. I mean, but he there, says but there are, after the tournament, there are stakes, isn't he though. like, yo, this is a drain. Like, I would, I'd rather not be doing anything else. It's fun. Yes. So, like, I'm emotionally, dr- like, I'm. But there you know, are, stakes there are stakes. It's not necessarily like the, like, essentially. It's not like eight mile. <laughs> right where it's a rap battle and it's just all right we all go home at the end no you know? no no and i mean some of these guys do get recruited you know what i mean so it's yeah. not like a completely low stakes affair you know he's saying like you know this this could this could be something for some of these guys like this doesn't just have to be street ball essentially guys can be recruited from this so there are stakes not just like you know inside of the politics of this tournament there's real world implications as well and i just think this film does a really good job at being a fly on the wall nobody's acknowledging that really there's a camera sitting there you know yeah i was surprised by how unconcerned everyone seemed to be about just the constant filming i mean people were you know like on the verge of shootouts like they were turning up in front of the cameras. And I'm just like, yo, is something going to pop? Is this going to turn into a freaking snuff film? Like, is this going to really pop off? Well, there's plenty of-, of moments where I'm like, uh, like the potential statutory rape situation that like got averted, but it's like, yo, how old is Shorty? Like, oh yeah, it's like, she's 12. 
Yeah. And I think and they like, made a comment like that, like something to the effect of like her body ain't 12 or something like that. And I was like, yikes, this is really from 97. <laughs> this is really raw. Like, but. But there is this feeling that like at any moment, one of these guys whole lives could be derailed by some bullshit. By anything. I mean, this is this is the urban plight. You know, they're in Brooklyn. Like, you know, they travel all around the city playing in these tournaments. And, you know, it's just this is what I want to point out, because it's been many years since I've seen Hoop Dreams, probably like I want to say 16, 17 years. But if I recall correctly, the subjects of that documentary, they were good. But like, I think really the lesson was like they weren't as great as they thought they were or like they weren't good enough. Right. Big fish, small pond. Right. You know, and like they kind of fizzled out, whereas these guys were like the best in the city, like feared and not just big, big fish, small pond. Like you oh my see God. in the, Booga, in the post, the post like, script bro, or whatever you see. Like, I mean, listen, I don't care how grainy this footage is. Like you can tell that watching Booger play. And I know I, I play basketball. I grew up. On, no, I love basketball. Bro. He's, he's sick with it. Right. Like he's so yeah, no dog. Like so fa- I've seen so many players, no, he, so no, many players, he, but like he he's, was doing he's like a leopard. Dude, that he's great, moving past bro. everybody. Yes. I mean, his <laughs> a bit like, I don't want to turn the basketball analysis, but if you don't play basketball, just, the man dribbles and weaves his way through traffic and bodies like the ball is an extension of him. Like I've he's, seen he's great dribblers, like a, like great a handlers, fucking but like he jaguar. Just, the way that he just like zooms through people, like I the mean, flash. It's nuts. I mean, it's really amazing. He's, I mean, and he just this is the interview. It's an hour and forty seven minutes. If you look up Ed Booger Smith emotional episode, streets or basketball full episode. Yeah. This From is. This year. Like, I have not watched February, this interview right? yet because as soon as I sat down to watch it, I'm like, "Fuck, I'm not going to have the time to watch this <laughs> and take notes for the show." So um, I will be watching this though, uh, just for my own personal enjoyment. And a lot of these guys, um, but really want to like, play D one, like yeah, they and do like, great they, things. Like these guys like went on to do things. So in a way it's more, almost more inspiring of a film than who and dreams. more of so, a cautionary tale too. It's not like at the end of hoop dreams, I was just like, man, are dreams just lives. <laughs> like that's, that's how I felt at the end of that. Whereas this, it's like, yo, your dreams can be what you want them, but you can be derailed. Yeah. You know, that was so sort I'm of thinking, the lesson here. Like there are pitfalls. Honestly, one, a one B for me, like who yeah, dreams one, a, Soul in the whole one B. I mean, I think that they would honestly make an excellent double feature with each other and just like being transported back to this era in New York, which is something that if anyone grew up, you know, in New York or you had moved to New York, you know, in the in the 90s at some point, you were around in like 95, 96, 97. This is that era. It's just unmistakable. It's like. I started getting like sensations. I'm getting them now, honestly. I'm getting like overwhelmed thinking about Bro, it. the the flavor of the air. Like I'm not from New York, but you can you can tell when an when an area has its own unique character, you know, yes. its own unique flavor profile. And, and I mean, I the mean, flavor it's so, it's so cliche is all over for this thing. A film critic to say like the the city is a character of its own. I mean, it's like, I mean, that's like beyond like <laughs> played out, you know, but. I just, I just, um, it, it, maybe it's a personal thing, but I'm just so overwhelmed with emotion when I'm watching this film that even though it lacks the narrative tightness that Ho- uh, Hoop Dreams has, this is, to me, the warmer, more inviting, more welcoming film of the two. And shout out to the director, because I saw a short clip from like, you know, mo- modern day booger, recent booger. Mm -hmm. I think he was explaining this was originally supposed to be about like all of the best hoopers. And like, I think he mentioned like sham God and like someone else. And she, it is, is I think her name's Danielle. You said director. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, She eventually settled on just focusing on Booger and his team. And I think that was 
a stroke of genius because yes. there is something a documentary is really i would think only be as good as its subjects they're so naturally compelling i mean kenny as a you you want to like hope you can write a character this full-bodied in an actual script i mean the guy's funny he's animated he's boisterous he's emotional like yes. this kenny guy he's everything he's a living breathing human being and that's when I yeah, said like, at the oh top my of God, the show, man, like, like Soul in the Hole, you know, starring real people from real life. <laughs> yeah, and it feels like that. They're and they're not like putting on, you know, a performance because the cameras are in front of them. Like, bro, the see, I'll tell you what really got me when he sees Booger off to Arizona in the airport, and he just like, you know, he breaks down sobbing because you can tell he's. You know, he's scared for Booger, but he's proud of him and he feels like a like a proud father. And he's just like and he doesn't want to see him like that. And you just see him sit down and like put his head in his hands and just start. Bro, like that was. I haven't felt feelings like that in a very long time. I think the relationship that was so real between Kenny and Booger. Oh, God. In the film. You know, I mean, that's love, honestly. It's really it's love. The way he talked re- about that boy. And, and honestly, love. he has love for all the people on the team. He's looking out for everybody. But it's yeah. just, it's apparent by watching this film, like, Booger is special as a player, and they yeah. have a special relationship. And yes. I'm really getting, like, emotional talking about this movie, no, bro, man. It's, it's, it's one of them ones. Like I'm getting choked up and, like, <laughs> overwhelmed thinking about all of this stuff. I mean, yeah, I did not man. expect this because from everything I've read about this movie, they're like, eh, it's no hoop dreams. They're like, oh, it's a minor yeah, film. That, a that's minor unfair. Forgotten that's film. so unfair to the film. And I'm thinking like, are you guys crazy? What other film captures New York in this specific era? This, this specific movement, which is such a big thing in New York, which is these public parks where there's basketball courts and people play. I mean, I'm sure you know about like the Rucker, right? Mm-hmm. Like, You know, this is like a big deal. This is like important, especially to like, you know, black and brown people in New York. This is like really important to document, you know, not to be like, (laughs) you know what I got to hit. And you ain't black. Yeah, me me ain't black. But still, you know, I just think it's important. I'm, uh, you know, I'm just trying to advocate that this is an important historical document, basically. That should be just watching the the people in watching. New York black folks interact with each other on camera naturally in 97. That's worth preservation. Like, you know, this, I mean, is, this I mean, is not like, acting. Let's, this is a slice this, of life, this is, like you said. This is 97, 98% black people at the court. You know? And like, we didn't see, is, I don't think we saw white people until they got to Arizona. Exactly. So, <laughs> I mean, th- this is something that, like, is is so honestly like not to be one of these like academia people but like this shit is fucking important this needs to be preserved <laughs> so this important is, hashtag this is, so important no but it is it's history. i'll put the stamp on it yeah it's the real history. Stamp, like you yeah. know this is real history and this is the kind of history that you know when people talk about gentrification this is what they're trying to push out of the neighborhoods so yeah, no. this absolutely needs to be preserved this is absolutely a historical document you know, yeah. I'll, I'll say, like, I feel really strongly about this movie. And I did not expect to at all. I like <laughs> basketball. I grew up, obviously, like in the 90s. I was a big Michael Jordan fan. I love like people who are great at what they do. So I love Kobe yeah. Bryant. I love LeBron James, you know, but, yeah. you know, I went to Money in the Bank 2016 and it was the final, you know, when the Lakers and the uh, or not the freaking Lakers, the Cavs and the Warriors rather. Uh, you know, the Warriors blew the three one lead. Uh, I was you gotta talk the, about that. I was at Money in the Bank. <laughs> no, nah, you ain't yeah. even had you you did that just to trigger mail. That's what I you was did. at Money No, I was at Money in the Bank and I wa- and they had Rusev versus Oh god. Titus O'Neil. Rusev versus <laughs> Titus O'Neil okay. was happening. And I was watching the game on my phone because, you know, Brown was about to do it. And <laughs> You know, like I, 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 I wouldn't say I'm like obsessed with basketball. I just love people who are at the top of their profession doing what they do best. Oh, okay. Curry fakes. Curry for three. Bang. No, listen, listen, Curry. 
I fucks with Curry. He's one of the top guys. <laughs> I like watching, even though, like, I'm a Mets fan, but I loved watching, like, Alex Rodriguez and, like, Derek Jeter play, like, on the Yankees because, like, they're good at baseball. Like, I like people who are good at things, and I like watching them be good yes, at Yes, ag- agreed. I think we, we're similar in that regard. I, I appreciate excellence. Yeah. You know, so, it's, it's why, like – as a kid, I you know like I'm like it's Tom Brady. I always with the stupid Patriots, and I got older. I'm like, yo, Tom Brady is this dude is good. Like he's just I don't gotta like him as a person. I don't gotta, but I respect the fact that someone has been successful oh, shit. and elite for this long. I spilled my this sprite. consistently. No. Yep. I spilled my sprite. Oh no. <laughs> Is my, face we, uh, gonna, is my face going to break apart like Drake in the commercial? <laughs> I hope not. That commercial kind of it kind of makes me itch a bit. It's a little, you know, is it? But it's a classic. It's a classic commercial at this point. I don't even have paper. Towels I think it's fair to say that commercial's in a classic. It's a it's a cult classic. Uh, commercial rankings ever. coming soon. Oh, oh, I would, bro. I would love to do commercial rankings. Let's get to uh, what do you say? Five thousand eight hundred fifty-two patrons. We'll do commercial. You're gonna have rankings. to keep track keep track of all these things. Um, <laughs> I am like currently, I am currently using a t-shirt, a like a, a a beater, if you will, like a cheap t-shirt to soak up the sprite off of the desk and away from the electronics. So that oh, yeah. I can just throw this thing in the washing machine when we're done. And uh, I don't have like any paper towels or napkins handy at all. But, you know, this shit is sticky. It's not like water. You got to get it up. That's the beauty of spilling uh, LaCroix. Exactly. Because it's water. I, I love exactly. sp- Sometimes I spill it a bit just to do it. I wish um, I was being funny. <laughs> But I'm, I drink like I take that first sip and like I waterfall it like like very stone cold like sloppily, just sort of splash around a bit and I'm like <laughs> water, you know. I'm gonna say something. Is that just real me? quick? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say something real quick about this film. I don't know who's listening right now and and can do something about it, but please, for the love of God, um, restore Get this that shit. That DVD rip restore this shit well, it put got it put out. on dvd no i know it's on and dvd but that's not good enough you gotta restore it wow. and put it on blu-ray so it's in 1080 you know nice and remastered 4k master whatever you gotta do 2k 4k figure it out this thing's gotta be on blu-ray i don't understand like <laughs> what the fuck you know how do they have There's... the emoji movie on Blu-ray, but this isn't on Blu-ray? <laughs> um, I just, I just want to say about this film. Uh, okay. I think. By the way, I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm good for now. Yeah, you cleaned up the sprite. First name ever. Yep. All right. Cool. Uh, you know, this uh, this guy Kenny. You know, you hear a lot about, you know, uh, from from different people. You hear a lot about father figures in the black community specifically, you know, and the effect that they can have or the effect their absence can have. And this this guy, Kenny, is a model example of what just being there in some capacity can do as far as keeping people out of things. It's like, even though Booger, and, and, and I get it, because a kid is going to do what a kid wants to do. He's going to... Well, and they stress that in the film, too. I mean, like, he was saying, like, you know, he's he's always going to, like, go back to the hood. He's always going to, like, be chilling that, with that's his what boys. He wanted to do. That's, that's who he is. That's what he wants to do. But the key and, was what Kenny was saying. It's like he needs to know that I'm going to be there for him no matter what. You know, he's like, yo, we had a little falling out, but I, I went out. He's I went out looking for him, you know, 
you know, he, like I drove around looking for him. He's like all night. I couldn't sleep. And he's like, you know, he taught He said like his mom taught him like and he said he's like, it's my child. And he doesn't say like he's like my child. He says, I believe like he's my child. Yeah. You know, like he he basically adopted this kid and treats him like his actual flesh and blood child. And he refuses to let Booger's tendencies be the end all be all, you know, like no matter what. Right, but, but at the same token, there. Who's, who's there when no one else showed up? Are you talking about Kenny? When are you no talking about Booger? Up. Right, right. When the when the other teammates didn't show up, Booger was there. Exactly. You know, and he was. He got was he, for that man. And what was he doing at that time? He, he was trying to get Kenny. Yeah, he was like, don't, be, yeah, he was don't worry to, about it. He was like, I got you. You know, you know like, he was trying to say like, whatever, man. Like we're good. It's all good. Yeah. You know, and and they ended up winning that game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was. I mean, it was just. And and by the, the way, point, the the banter on the court, uh, I, I one of the guys says "fuck Kenny's king" <laughs> instead of did. Kenny Kenny Kings. Yeah, <laughs> Kenny said Kings. "fuck Kenny Kenny's king." Kenny yeah. Kings, or yeah. <laughs> no, the the banter, a lot of it is problematic, but it's very real, very real, very entertaining, very tense. It's a lot. There's a lot of emotions watching these 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 tournament games go down. But the uh, the point I was gonna make is that you know ultimately you know Booger's fate by the end of the documentary is kind of up in the air. But you don't get the sense it's like oh it's over for him or it's like Kenny failed. It's like listen, as long as Kenny feels the way he feels and Booger knows that he knows he has somebody, you know and you know that this guy still cares. He hasn't just abandoned him. He's like, everybody told me, like his grandma said, just leave him, you know, give up. You know, and he's like, no, I'm not going to give up. And the point I want to make is that, you know, yeah, a lot can be discussed as far as the quality of mentorship or the quality of, of parenting. It's like, yeah, you want to do things the right way. You don't, just being there isn't enough. You know, you could be there and, and teach your kids the wrong things or instill bad habits or, you know, cause all sorts of trauma. But here's the thing, not being there. If if you're going to, if you're going to have to decide between being there and not being there, I think, I think you're going to probably take being there. If it's Kenny, who's doing his best, who's like a little rowdy himself, but like right. has he's, he's a, a little great heart on the edges, but like, yeah, but I you mean, can tell th- he has a he heart. Of has like a this guy cares about, about these kids more and than he's anything. Really the, he's he's the spending all his money to the last penny, yes. you know, buying them Gatorades, getting them home. Like he cares. Like, he yeah, said he wants it to whole, be like a family. Soul in the whole. You know? I like that, by the way, when he was saying like, this isn't just a team, like this is supposed to be like a family. This is supposed to be like a family, you know, um, and they rode around like that. Right. Soul in the hole yeah. is the tournament, the team. One of the many tournaments. Kenny, King, Kenny Kings. But, um, you know, soul, though, like he he does embody that soul of the film. He is the soul of the film. You know, I mean, you just know? imagine how quickly Booger would have been lost without a Kenny. You know, yeah, Kenny doesn't have all the answers, but he cares. And he doesn't want to see him do the bad things or, or do bad things. It's just. You know, I think this is a this document is a Kenny, testament but, to just I mean, trying. Really, Kenny, though, is a just testament like, to trying again, like not being, giving up. Being this guy, yeah, he could be loud, he could be aggressive, you know, he could be like offensive even. But at the end of the day, who do I think Kenny is? I think he's a really family oriented, hard working guy. That's yeah, what I mean, this bro, movie we see him portrays break down, him as, you know. That's passion. It's emotion. That's love. You know, he's in the airport crying, seeing this kid off. You know, like this is, <laughs> you know, this, this is the point. It's what I like about documentaries is, you know, real life isn't neat. Real life is messy, very messy, you know, and that's the nature of things. So when they lose the final game, it's not a Hollywood ending. When you find out Booger moves back, that's not a Hollywood ending. But I think what I choose to take away from this is 
the vigor and zeal and just effort put forth in in the in lives in these lives in the film you know from kenny from booger it's which is why ultimately i found it more i found it more inspirational than hoop dreams because much more much more inspirational. you know it's almost like all right like you know like the old az song your world don't stop like right you know know, they both don't have storybook endings but Uh, don't let your reel run out (laughs) <laughs> that's a good one if i may say so myself i think it's your, I think it's your best one if i can humbly uh say so myself wow well uh this ain't this ain't melvin birch rankings this ain't even rap rankings this is moves and mel at the movies and really i guess my final statement would be to tie in as i'm thinking about it to another thing that uh that kenny said um about booger when he's like you know, you can tell he, he doesn't really know how the college thing's going to work out. He doesn't know if, like, the recruiter's blowing hot air or whatever. But right. he said he told Booger, it's like, you know, might as well find out. You know, like, try. You know, like, we don't know if he, he can hit the books like that at the college level. We don't know if he's – but, like, hey, you got an opportunity. I think go for it. Just go yeah. for it. You know, why not? It's either that or it, stick around here and do nothing. Like, give yourself a chance. And I think that that's what I take away from this. It's not about failure or, you know, losing your way. It's about knowing that you can always try, you know. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm not my, trying to get biggest... philosophical here. No, but saying. I can't. I mean, really, I like, it's hard. It's hard to not, like, be emotive when trying to break this one down. Because it's not so much. It's hard to review someone's real life. Like, even the show, <laughs> you know? the show is like a bunch of randomly assembled clips of rappers who have already basically made it doing what they do. This is, you know, a, a day by day account of real people who are actually struggling to, and they don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So right. it's hard to put a number on it. You know, you can only really rate it from like, a presentation point of view how well did the director communicate what they were trying to get across here you know and as like i have to take it as like part historical time capsule part like slice of life just like real like just like a real slice of reality um and it's i mean it is real because again like this is part of new york this is part of like just being a New Yorker is seeing this. So I have to, you know, I can't just sit at a seven with this one. I got to give it the eight minus. Um, It could be a little tighter from an editing point of view, I guess you could say, but I wasn't really concerned with all of that. I was actually kind of like swept up in it and sort of wistful for the old New York. So yeah. I'm 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 happy with my rating here. I'm happy to have seen this film. Big surprise for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that 8. That 8 for me, 8 minus for you and it I, it it gets my endorsement. Definitely check it out. I mean, here's the thing like I I just remembered it. I mean, I I pretty much said all I want to say, but like as you're watching it, you know, I had or I, as I was watching, I had the realization like, man, I hope you know like I <laughs> like I'm like I hope booger makes it out like i hope he and then i get to thinking i'm like man if he if he did make it out and ended up being that big i would probably know about him because i know Rick, all of the I big mean, basketball players and, and because so i'm like oh no is he gonna die like is there's something well, he, about he the way that he plays that would have made him definitely stand out even if he wasn't a star player he'd right. be like it's like i would have basketball heard about yeah basketball fans basketball player you know what i exactly. mean exactly and you know. I mean, not for nothing, like I, I Shah's brother, George, who played for Manhattan College, like um, I know plenty of people who had these hoop dreams, quote unquote, you know, who played in these tournaments, who went on to play in college with hopes of getting, you know, going to the league. Some of them ended up playing in Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. Like, it's crazy. Like the the pipeline that exists you know and there's 
one thing that I can say is common across all of these different people that I know is a really intense dedication and focus and drive to doing this thing. And then the reality of it not being exactly what they thought it was going to be. And some of these guys were hugely talented and probably could have made it in the league, but you know, Art. one, one bad game, you know, where there are recruiters there, something like that, or a very competitive year draft year, you know, stuff like that. Just, you never know what path you're going to end up on in life, but yeah. You know, it's it feels real when you know people who have been on this specific path and what happens afterwards and how that's gone on to define some of them and how some of them have moved on and have done other things and then how some maybe got what they wanted in different ways, like they ended up playing basketball in a different country. So, you know, it's a roll of the dice, just like everything else in life. And these are the kind of films that you can sit and sort of ruminate on those things and yeah. you can make those connections to your real life. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't have much more to add. I think it's really good. Yeah. That's pretty much it. You know, They're probably the most emotional experience I've had this season Agreed. so far. Agreed. Uh, and you know, it's these, funny because movies. like, I technically have more vivid memories of New York from 2006 when we did kill a season last week. And like, I'm familiar with the Harlem and whatnot on display in kill a season, but it doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies like this does something just about the way this is filmed, the music that's used in it. And quite frankly, just the element of reality versus bullshit because kill a season is, is, is funny, but it's bullshit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we had a New York, mm -hmm. uh, two back to back New York films. I think this right. one's better. It's better. It's better. You know, and that's, and this is why earnestness will always win over silly shit. <laughs> I, 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 this is why I've seen, you know? I've seen silly stuff win a lot of things. It wasn't supposed silly to win. Shit. I'll just say this is what happens when good filmmaking is put up against bad filmmaking. For sure. I'll say that. I, I mean, this isn't the best filmmaking though. I think it's the characters and the, like you said, film's only as good as its subject when it's a documentary. Right. Well, they picked but, the Danielle snap. I'll say that. Much. You know, I, I'm just saying the funny, haha, -ha, like the irony gimmick and the so bad it's good can only take you so far in life, you know? Yeah. But if you if you hit someone in in the heart or in the soul, then you know you found the hole. No, oh, God. All right. Uh, I guess uh, if you're ready, I can hit the music. I'm ready. All right. Well, we're signing off. Take it away, moles. Next week on Mools and Mel at the Movies, it's 50 Cent in Get Rich or Die Trying. But this Saturday on Mools and Mel at the Movies, it's Tales from the Hood. That's right. Tales from the Hood and Get Rich or Die Trying as we cap off this wonderful show known as Mools and Mel at the Movies. And then what? I don't know. Billy Boards fucked us. He fucked us real bad. He fucked us real bad in our stupid asses. Good night. Hey, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all of the other episodes, check the link in the description, stop by raprankings.com, or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. And please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting to help us grow the channel and continue our journey as hip-hop's first and premier extreme podcast.